to breakfast. Uh, it is 18 minutes to eight. Four months worth of rain in 24 hours saw Auckland devastated with flooding, something that urban design experts say could have been minimised if we built our cities better. For more on what that entails, I'm joined by urban planning lecturer Timothy Welch. Uh, Timothy, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. For being with us this morning. I, I want to I start by first acknowledging the fact that four people lost their lives with that downpour that happened on Friday. N numerous people have been left, left homeless, homeless. Numerous have been left without anything. And so I wonder whether we're surprised by what happened on Friday in terms of the infrastructure not coping here in Tamaki Makoto. Yeah, I mean, I think any city would struggle to cope with that much water yep. in a single day. Uh, but our infrastructure is really old. I mean, the bulk of our stormwater was built in the 1950s. Uh, we upgrade here and there. Uh, but the entire system really needs to be rethought to avoid this kind of thing in the future. Yeah, we talk um, about three waters. And although, you know, it's a controversial topic at the moment, it's not the, uh, more about the how as opposed to the why. But we know that we need uh, better infrastructure here in Tāmaki Makoto. But what else do we need? on top of that, because that's not the only solution, right? Certainly. There's a lot of ways we can take the stress out of our current infrastructure, yep. and in a way that makes us have to build less. Uh, so there's a lot of things like we can remove a lot of our impervious surfaces, so pavement and car parks, or replace it with porous cement so the water can filter through. Uh, we can plant more trees and native species and berms along roads that help capture and slow down that water and filter it to keep that dirty water out of our beaches and, and the sea. Uh, and that's kind of just the beginning list and floodable parks, all sorts of different infrastructure that's attractive to people, but also mitigates a lot of that storm water. Can we talk about those floodable parks and, and, and talk me through some of the things that are actually being done already um, here in Tamaki Makoto, yeah. but in, in, in different parts, right? Yeah, sure. If we look at a really good example is Stonefields, uh, and the neighborhood kind of preserved a lot of their wetlands and built a terraced floodable park. So part of it sits uh, underwater most of the time, but when it rains, it can fill up um, and hold a lot more water than any pipe really could, uh, especially when that water is, is pouring down. Um, so they fared very well during the recent events. Can, can we use that example and shift it to other places in Tamaki Makoto? And obviously every, every place is going to be different, right, throughout the city itself. Certainly. Um, if we look at old historical maps of, um, of the city, we can see there are all sorts of streams that we've buried yes. and put into pipes. Yep. Uh, and so one simple thing we could do is start to bring some of those out of the pipes, what we call daylighting, and let them be natural reserves again. Uh, that eats up a little bit of urban space, but it saves us so much much uh, in terms of flooding and, and new infrastructure that we would need. Um, and that's just kind of a starting point of things that we could do. What potentially could Tamaki Makoto look like? If we're talking about these kinds of uh, infrastructure and, and doing things differently, and obviously all of this takes time and it takes money, but we know that this isn't just a one-off, right? That these events are starting to occur more and more and more. So potentially, what could Tamaki Makoto look like? Well, there's a lot of good examples from around the world. So as far afield as Singapore, mm. who um, regularly gets 200 centimeters of rain on a, you know, in one day, which is what they're saying we raised about what we got um, in the last storm event. But they avoid flooding because they've let a lot of this natural environment out, right? So they have nice parks and waterways that can channel a lot of that rainwater. Um, so we could be a really attractive urban environment um, and try to push more density up instead hmm. of sprawling out into our existing wetlands. So what you're talking about is local government, right? And, and, and what local government could do. But I just wonder on a, on a personal, on an individual level, what things that we could be doing in our homes, on, in, our, in our property, that could actually help in the future. Yeah, certainly all the pavement we have on our sections, on our roofs uh, as, as impermeable surfaces contribute to a lot of that runoff. So slowing down that water, capturing that water is important. We can have our own rain barrels at the, at the mm -hmm. end of our downspouts to capture that water and then uh, water our lawns. We can replace some of our lawns with na native species uh, so that that kind of absorbs some of the water as well. And things as simple as uh, replacing the driveway when it's time with a more permeable surface or a 
gravel or something like that also helps nature kind of do that filtering and absorption faster than a pipe or a gutter could do. Mm -hmm. Timothy, thank you so much for your time this morning and thank you for, for being with us. My pleasure. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, really appreciate it. All right, Kate Tony my stay with us. Coming up, taking on a challenge of a lifetime while one man is swimming over 300 kilometres. Stay with us. That's coming up after the break.